Hi guys, back to this project where I'm trying to make batteries, homemade batteries from various uh, items. Looking through Lid Motor's old videos, back in 2012 he made a rechargeable battery using stainless steel and Epsom salts. Well, I got some stainless steel scourers there cheap ones from Poundland, so there's a good chance they're not really stainless steel, but we'll try them. I've also got some Epsom salts, and these are the sort you put in the bath to make it smell nice. So they're going to have impurities in them. I think Lidmotor used the um, pharmaceutical version, the sort of thing you put in your, uh, well, I'll say cup of tea, um, not the bath time ones. Anyway, I'm going to try some of these. What I'm going to do is I've cleaned out this sauce bottle. I'll put some warm water in there and dissolve Epsom salts in there as much as I can. Keep shaking it and try and dissolve them in there uh, to make us a solution. I've cut the bottom off of a milk bottle or jug or carton or whatever you want to call it. So that'll be my uh, battery um, container. So we'll put a couple of these in, one either side, put the liquid in, check that there's no current flowing first, and then we'll charge them by just connecting it to a battery for a while, and then we'll see if we get any current or any voltage out of it. If we get enough, then we'll try and get one of my solar rockers to run off it. Uh, what Lin Motor does, he, he has some of his very low energy uh, flashing LED things that he uses just to demonstrate that it's got power. The solar rocker will probably need more power than that, so it may not work, but we'll, we'll have a go anyway. Um, yeah, the circuit that lid motor uses is probably one of those um, jaw thief type things where you actually get an LED lighting from very low power. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Mix up some Epsom salts, try and make a saturated solution. Chuck it in there, a couple of them in as the anode and cathode, and we'll see how we go. I've mixed the Epsom salts, the bath time Epsom salts, with hot water. Put as much in there as I could until it stopped dissolving. So that's our electrolyte, I suppose. We need a couple of these. Just to say, there's a good chance these aren't really stainless steel. Oh, looks like they're linked together somehow as well. Don't want that. Get some scissors. Or cutters, anyway. I suppose that might be useful. Uh, we do put a black one on there. At the moment the colours are going to be insignificant because it depends on which way round we charge it as to which way round the positive and negative are. Because they're the same material for both the cathode and the anode there's no automatic positive and negative. Let's just move him out of the way a minute. Okay so before we put anything in, meter, can you see that? I think we can. So we go positive, uh, negative to negative, positive to positive. At the moment, uh, we're on the 20 volt scale and we've got nothing. So We'll add the so I 
much. What if I did it this way? It would strain it, but that's going to take far too long to go in. Because this is one of those bottles that's got a little sieve at the top. But we'll abandon that idea. And just pour it. You can see there's lots of crystals around there. Right, so we've got no voltage showing at all at the moment. It'd be handy if they actually went right in the water. There was a comment on his video that once you've passed current through here, the uh, chemical that you end up with is rather unpleasant. So it might be worthwhile not doing this with your hands once you've started mixing it with water, but mixing it with current. Um, I'll just go and read the label again. So we've got steel, which is well, basically iron with other stuff in it. The Epsom salts are magnesium sulfate with added fragrance, which is probably going to cause a problem. Anyway, at the moment we've got no voltage. So what I'm going to do is charge it. Uh, which way should we do this? Just disconnect for a minute. I'm aiming to give it six volts. That's what the motor did. So if I go there, yeah, that's six volts. So if I connect that lead up to the, the new battery lead, that should now be putting six volts into there. And at the moment, that's our red wire and that's our black wire, so positive, negative going in. Bit of a breaking continuity here, guys. I just demonstrated it all working, and then one of my jumper leads here failed, and I was getting zero voltage reading from everything. I couldn't get anything right. So we're going to have to restart a bit here. Uh, I've swapped to a small LiPo battery, so we're getting 8.3 volts out of it. That's fairly fresh. So if I just reconnect to there, put that one on there. Oh, before we do that, we ought to measure the output from here. Now, we might have some residual voltage in here where it's charged up. Um, in the previous video, or the previous bit that I'm now going to abandon. So I've just disconnected the battery, connect up the positive to the recharged battery here that we just created, and we got about a volt. Right. So the battery is not in circuit that battery's not in circuit we're using this one and at the moment we've got about a volt from it if i put my little solar rocker in there i don't think that one volt will be enough to get her going uh, oh it's a bit of a reach this is where it went wrong before because one of these leads i was using didn't work right okay she's running or she did, off the bit of voltage that we put in there. So we have created a rechargeable battery because we've charged it. We're now discharging it through the solar wobbler, but we'll disconnect her again of that lead. So 
So the little capacitor in there has to die down. So she's now disconnected. If I connect the battery to the battery, that's the LiPo battery is now charging the rechargeable battery. So we've got about eight volts going in there at the moment. We have got the um, Epsom salts is actually crystallizing out here. I don't know whether I needed to heat the water and dissolve as much as I did, but yeah, that's crystallizing out. I don't think it's particularly a product of the electrical current being passed through it. I think it's just crystallizing out as it's cooling down. Well, we've given that a few seconds, so we'll disconnect that. Dropped away to about 2 volts. Connect up our solar rocker again. And away she goes. So we have created a rechargeable battery using uh, steel wool, or whatever they call them, stainless steel scourers, and Epsom salts containing magnesium sulfate crystals with added fragrance. I will say this smells a bit better than the battery, uh, potato battery I made the other day, because the potato went rotten and that was pretty awful to smell. So yeah she's running now. I'll actually leave her running see how long she runs for. It's quarter past five Wednesday the 23rd of October. You can probably hear it's raining now it's about half past eight at night and she has finally run the battery down. She's just twitching a tiny bit. We're down to 0.6 of a volt. She starts rocking well at about 0.7 so 0.6 she's only twitching. But that looks like we've run for about three hours on uh, that battery so I should be able to recharge it. I'm just looking in there and yeah quite a bit of the quite a bit of it's crystallized but I don't think that's anything to do with the current flowing through it. I think it's just because I made a super saturated solution and it's crystallizing out. So yeah it worked. Well, it's about quarter past three on Thursday the 24th. I gave the battery a boost last night before I went to bed. So that was about mm, midnight, one o'clock, something like that. Only a short boost. And she's been running ever since. It went up to about two volts when I boosted it. It's down to 0.6 of a volt now, which is enough to keep her just going. She's just getting to the point where she's going to do that stop and jerk instead of the regular rock. But this stuff seems to be getting better each time I recharge it, which is interesting. I don't know if you can actually see, but there are lots of crystals in the bottom of there which, as I said several times, is, I think, because I made it a super saturated solution and it's now crystallizing out, I don't think it's anything to do with the charge flowing through it. I think that'll do. 
I know lid motor has been running his for years. I'm not really planning to do that, but if I can find a suitable uh, solar panel, I will see if I can run it on a solar panel to keep it charged up during the day. Thanks for watching. If you like that, then you might like this. And if you like this and that, you might like to subscribe over there.